From the text set Banishing Cultures, Frozen Land by Jan Reynolds. Introduction. The Inuit, known as the Caribou Hunters, lived near the shores of Kamanatuak, an inlet of Hudson Bay. Throughout most of the year, their land is covered with snow. When these people travel and hunt along the frozen shores and across the windy plains, they live in igloos, round houses made out of blocks of snow. When the ice breaks up and melts for a short time in the warmer months, they live in tents made of caribou hide. Long ago, they depended on the caribou for survival and waited for their annual migration to hunt them. But this ancient way of life is disappearing. When fur traders and trappers from Europe came to the lands of the Inuit, the caribou herds became smaller and moved away. Without the regular migration of the caribou, Inuit life changed. Because the Inuit believe that they, the caribou, and all nature share a common spirit, they respect the land and the animals, depending on them to provide what is necessary for a good life. We are all part of the same human family, and we all depend on the land and nature to provide us with the things we need to live. Perhaps we can learn from the relationship the Inuit have with their natural surroundings before their way of life vanishes forever. As the sun sets on the edge of the frozen shores of Kamanatwak, a large inlet of Hudson Bay, Kanalagak asks her grandmother for one more story. They hurry to prepare tea before the chill of darkness comes, and Kanalagak's grandmother begins her tale. Long ago, your grandfather traveled great distances with his dogs and sled in search of the caribou herd. As Inuit, we depend on Tuktu, the caribou, to provide us with meat to eat and skin to make warm clothing. To protect himself from the winds on the open plains, your grandfather would build an igloo out of blocks of snow. Grandmother's tale goes on into the night. When Kanalagak falls asleep, she dreams of a long sled journey over the snow-covered land. The next day, the cold winds that often blow across the ice are calm. Kanalagak's mother decides it is a good time to teach her daughter to fish. Mother keeps Panik, little sister, warm inside her large parka while she shows Kanalagak how to move the hook up and down in the water to attract fish. Many big fish have been caught here, and they hope to catch more. Aritak, Kanalagak's older brother, fishes on his own behind a small windbreak of snow. He breaks a hole in the ice with a long pole, then scoops the broken ice out with a large spoon-like shovel. After he removes the freezing slush, a retack lies in the snow and peers down into the hole. He is looking for a shadow or movement that could be a fish. Kanalagak loves the taste of fresh, raw fish. It's a treat. But Tuktu, the caribou, is the animal her people have depended on for their way of life. Caribou meat is the most common meal, and it too is often eaten raw. When there is plenty of caribou meat, some is left out on the snow to dry naturally. The dried meat will be eaten later when the caribou herds cannot be found. The caribou skin is used to make clothing, blankets, and the tents the Inuit live in during the warmer months. Even the bones and antlers are made into tools the Inuit need. When they hunt caribou, the Inuit build Inusuk, rock piles that are stacked to look like men. The caribou think the Inuksuk are, are hunters and they move away from the rock statues, unknowingly moving toward the real Inuit hunters who are waiting for them. 
When the caribou skin is removed, the inside is scraped clean with the curved blade of the ulu, a half moon shaped knife. After the skin has dried, it is cleaned again and softened by scraping it with a dull scooped blade. Once the skins are soft and clean, they are ready for mother to cut and sew into boots, pants, and parkas for the entire family. Ptarmigan and hare also live near the frozen shores. In the winter, their feathers and fur turn white, so they blend into the snowy landscape. This makes them difficult to find for Inuit hunters and other predators. Great polar bears leave tracks on the edge of the ice by the big bay where they search for seals to eat. Foxes often follow the bears so they can eat what the bears leave behind. In this land of snow, animals need one another to live. The Inuit believe there is a life spirit in all things. This spirit connects them to their land and everything living there. The animals, birds, fish, and even the rocks and the wind share the life spirit with the Inuit. Wolves also roam the cold, windy plain. Aritak teases his sister by covering himself in a wolf skin his father brought home from his last hunting trip. When Kanalagak is not looking, Aritak pops up from behind the snow disguised as a wolf. Kanalagak runs until she hears her brother laughing at her. She also laughs at how silly he looks under the wolf skin. Playing outside together on the vast frozen plain, Kanalagak and Aritak often invent their own games. Kanalagak likes to make angels in the snow, and Aritak practices flips while they wait for their father to return. Father has been running his dogs over the snow and ice. He is training them to work together as a team when they pull the sled. The dogs are fast and strong. When Kanalagak's father arrives home, she helps him untie the dogs from the sled and give them food and water. After the dogs have been taken care of, it is time to make a new igloo. Grandmother and grandfather want a special place for the family to sing their old songs and to dance. Kanalagak's father teaches her how to build an igloo. As he stacks the ice blocks, he shows her how to shave the snow off the edges of the block. Mother and Aritak shovel loose snow onto the sides of the igloo. This closes up the small spaces between the blocks and keeps out the wind. While father continues to stack the blocks, mother builds a small entry room for the igloo. She cuts blocks out of the floor area to use for the walls. In the entry room, a fire can be lit and the smoke can escape through a small hole she will cut in the ceiling. The most difficult part of building the igloo is closing in the roof. When cut, the edges of the blocks must be angled to fit together and support each other. It only takes about an hour for the family working together to build the igloo. When the igloo is ready, Kanalagak gathers twigs for a fire to make tea, but she does not go far to dig under the snow for the twigs. The land is covered by low clouds, and if she wanders too far, she will not be able to see the igloo and might lose her way. But someday, like her father, she will be able to tell direction by observing the sastrugi, wind patterns in the snow. Her father can always find his way home, even when he travels far with his sled and dogs. Grandmother and grandfather have invited a friend, who's a good drummer, to join a celebration in the new igloo. After feasting on raw frozen fish, the drummer begins, Kalauzak, playing his drum while singing and dancing. Kalauzak is often performed to thank the life spirit for helping the Inuit catch many fish or bring home many tuktu. And sometimes 
The drum dance is simply performed to celebrate how good life is. After the drum dance, grandmother and her friend play a singing game called Kayavak, whispering from deep in their throats into a pot. They mimic each other's words and sounds while singing faster and faster. As the two friends play, they create a beautiful soft echo, like the sounds of the wind laughing and sighing outside the igloo. The next day, when the winds are calm, Kanalagak fishes on the ice. She is proud to learn the ways of the Inuit, ways that respect the spirit of life in a land of snow and ice.